Y Combinator is the most famous startup accelerator in the world. It funds hundreds of early stage companies every year, but most people don't properly understand how does YC evaluate and gauge success at this early stage of investing. And this is not only true for YC, but also venture capitalists in general. And in fact, it's also how big tech companies evaluate product decisions. Let's do some quick math. YC has two batches every year, winter and summer, and the number of companies funded each time will vary. But let's keep it simple and say 500 companies per year are funded by YC. And you'll get $500,000 if you get into the program. So 500 times 500K is $250 million worth of capital is being deployed by Y Combinator every year into these very early stage companies. And for a good company, they will almost certainly be future rounds of financing, right? Series A, B, C. And with, with each round, there will be some dilution. So let's ignore all the complexity around pro rata rights and follow on financing. If you get to the promised land, you get to an IPO. By that point, the stake of Y Combinator in your company is probably going to go down to somewhere between 2 and 3%. So if you look at the math from the perspective of one really hugely successful company like Coinbase, right? Coinbase is a YC alum. They're now worth about $20 billion. So if you assume a 2% ownership stake in Coinbase, that's $400 million YC stake in Coinbase. So it more than pays for all of the initial $250 million investment. And it will also pay for the operational cost of hiring people, uh, events, office space, and a lot more. And so really, that's how YC thinks about it. What they want is out of the 500 companies that they fund every year, they want two or three outcomes like Stripe, Airbnb, or Coinbase. The other 99% of companies that get funding from YC, they'll get encouragement and support, but frankly, they don't matter for the bottom line. And that's what makes startup investing so counterintuitive. All the money is made in the outliers. This is a really hard thing to wrap our heads around because the scale of the outcomes can be so vastly different, right? Um, we've all heard of the secretary problem, which is where you're trying to evaluate a secretary to hire and you have to make the decision about whether you want to hire the candidate in front of you or wait for another candidate who might be a little bit better. And we'd expect that, okay, maybe there is someone who's 20, 30, 40% better than the candidate we're currently evaluating, either for a job or for marriage or for whatever it might be. But what you wouldn't expect is for the next candidate you evaluate to be a thousand times better than your current option in front of you, right? But that is exactly the game that VCs are playing. You have to train your brain to find that thousand X outcome because those certainly do exist in startup world. When it comes to evaluating if an investment is good or not, the question that YC is asking is, is there a chance that this becomes a huge company, either because the market is enormous or the team is really good and they'll find that market, they'll find that opportunity to make it a huge company. This is true not only for YC, but for VC in general. If you go to any venture capitalist and you say, hey, I have a 100% chance of making a company which is worth $50 million. Um, but there's not really that much opportunity to grow beyond that, you're actually not that interesting, which is weird because building a $50 million company is a huge endeavor. And if you're the founder of that, that's an amazing life. You're making literally millions and millions of dollars every year because of this $50 million company. But if you instead go to a VC and you say, hey, I have a 1% chance of making a $10 billion company, now all of a sudden you become interesting because there is a small chance that you can actually have a huge outcome. And now the VC is economically incentivized uh, to, to talk to you and be interested. And so your job as a CEO of a startup is to deliver a compelling narrative around why your company has a chance, however small, to be a huge $10 billion or $100 billion company. Interestingly, big tech companies actually work in a very similar way to what we just described. So if you work at Meta, Google, Microsoft, these are companies which have half a trillion, a trillion dollars or more in market cap. And so really, the only interesting possibilities for them are products or services which can add tens of billions of dollars into their market cap. So let's say you're a PM and you're working on a product which is making a couple million or maybe even $20 million a year, right? That sounds like a huge number in absolute terms, and it is. But unless there's a very clear path to generating billions in revenue, it's really not that interesting for Microsoft to continue investing in that product. And that's why it is, it's a little frustrating, right? You have these whole graveyard of products by Google and Meta, and these are products that might have millions of users, but because they don't have a path to becoming a huge revenue driver for the business, the opportunity cost of investing in that is too high. It just isn't rational to continue putting time and money and engineering resources into building a product when you really should be spending your time, if you're Meta, if you're Mark Zuckerberg, you really should be spending your time 
developing the thing which could become a $100 billion opportunity instead of the $1 billion or the $500 million opportunity. Coming back to Y Combinator, I'm actually currently going through the summer 2022 batch with my company called Taro. Check it out at jointaro.com. The idea of Taro is that we help software engineers navigate their career. We help you get onboarded, promoted. We help you figure out how to optimize your job and your career. And the vision is that, you know, we're starting with software engineers, but we want to become huge by becoming the destination, the premier destination for people in tech, ambitious people in tech in these white collar, high leverage jobs to figure out how to navigate and succeed in their career. And if we can do that, there is a pretty clear path to becoming a pretty huge company. So I would love your feedback on that. Um, tell us how we're doing if you're a software engineer, which is where we're starting. Jointar.com, I'll leave a link in the description. The other consequence of what we talked about with this mentality of investing is how common it is for companies in Y Combinator to pivot. And this actually happens in two ways, a soft pivot or hard pivot. Soft pivot means that you come in with a certain idea, but you find out that it's hard to sell or hard to gain traction. So you kind of change your audience. So you do some slight modification to change how your company is being pitched. And that happens quite a bit. But what surprised me is actually there are a ton of companies who are doing a hard pivot. A hard pivot meaning that you came in with an idea and you completely abandoned that and went on to do something else because it's just so hard to justify the market or the opportunity in what you originally started. And the beauty of YC is that they're taking a bet on you. You get in, it's up to you to decide how you want to spend your time and the 500K investment to really make a huge company. In any given batch of Y Combinator, the vast majority of companies are going to end up dying. There's going to be some companies that do okay, and there's going to be one or two home runs. And the time, the attention, the money, all of that will get concentrated completely on those home run opportunities. And so your job as a founder, at least if you're doing a VC scale startup, is to try and be one of those one or two home run opportunities. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.